So now we're going to take a look at what's called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And basically, what he says is the total pressure in a container is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of all the gases in the container. So if we have helium and neon and nitrogen N2 in a gas, if each of them is a total of one pressure, one, one atmosphere each, then the total pressure for those three gases is going to be three pressures. We just add together the pressures of our individual gases to get the total pressure. And it can be for an infinite number of gases. So I've done P1 plus P2, but, but it can go on and on and on. If we know the pressure of each of the gases, we can then figure out what the total pressure is. So in this way, a mixture of gas is collected at a pressure of 101.3 kilopascals. If we know the gas is 70% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and 10% carbon dioxide, here we'll put a decimal here to be consistent, um, what is the partial pressure of each gas in the mixture? Well, they're going to contribute to the pressure based on how much of each of them we have. So if we're looking at N2, if we know our total pressure is um, 101.3, then 70% or 0 0.70 of 101.3 kilopascals will be contributed to by the nitrogen. So 70.9 kilopascals is due to the nitrogen. It's 20% oxygen, so that's O2. So that's 0 0.20 times that 101.3 as the total pressure. And so 0.2 gives me 20.3. And then carbon dioxide, CO2, is 10% of the 101.3 kilopascals. And so that's going to be 10.1 kilopascals. And so each of these, if I add these together just to check my work, should equal 101.3. So if I add these three together, and they're going to be slightly different due to rounding, um, but it, it should be pretty close. And I get, I actually get the exact 101.3 kPa. So I know how much each is contributing. Uh, pretty straightforward. The other way we use this partial pressure is when we collect a gas over water. And we will do um, two labs where we're going to collect gas over water. So we have some sort of reaction in here, and this is a fancy way of collecting it. We're going to collect it much simpler, but the gas then travels down this tube and bubbles into here. And so this whole thing was full of water, and you can see that it's filled with, with the gas. But water also has a pressure. And so in here, not only is there gas one, but there's also water vapor molecules mixed in here as well. And so those are in there, and they are taking up some of the space and contributing to some of this pressure. So I'm going to show you a good involved problem of how we use this collecting gas over water. Okay, so here's a, here is a big, long problem. First of all, I want you to take a look at this problem and be proud at how far you've come this year in chemistry, because this is really starting to put all of, all of your knowledge together from the beginning of the year. So it says a sample of solid potassium chlorate was heated in a test tube and decomposed into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. First thing we're going to need is we're going to need a balanced equation. So I'd like you to go ahead and write, I don't even worry about the rest of the problem yet, but write the balanced equation for that. It's a great way to review. So pause the video and then write it and come back to it. If you got that as your reaction, then you are off to a great start. This ends up being a solid here, and our O2 is the only gas that is produced. So it says the oxygen produced was collected by displacement of water at 22 degrees and a total pressure of 754. So that's this. The reaction, this KClO3 is in here, and we collected the O2 by displacement of water. That's what that means. So it was collected by displacement of water at 22 so I'm just going to keep a little list of things. So 22 degrees Celsius, because I don't like these paragraphs. A total pressure, so P total is equal to 754 torr. The volume of gas collected, so volume is equal to 0.651 liters. And the vapor pressure of water at 22 degrees Celsius is 21 
torr, so vapor pressure of H2O, meaning how much it contributes to the pressure, at 22 degrees Celsius is 21 torr. If it was a higher temperature, there would be more, more evaporation, and therefore this number would be higher. You get it from a table. It's not something that you would know. There's a table that you read that has that information. So it says calculate the partial pressure of O2 in the gas collected, and then the mass of the potassium chloride in the original sample. So this is a many-step problem. First, we need to calculate the partial pressure. Pressure total is equal to the pressure of the water plus the pressure of the oxygen. That's my two gases that are in there. It told me that my total pressure was 754 torr, and that um, the pressure of the water vapor pressure is 21, and that I'm looking for my pressure of my O2. So my pressure of my O2 is going to be that 754 minus the 21, and I'm going to get 733. Now I need to figure out how many moles I have of this because I have a pressure and a temperature and a volume and I need to figure out how many moles I have because then I can use that to do stoichiometry. So first thing I'm going to do is make this into Kelvin so I don't forget. So my 273 plus 22 gives me 295. And so then I'm going to set up my second part which is PV. Notice I'm not going back to this part of the problem at all. Everything now is down here. PV equals nRT. I'm going to use the pressure of just the O2 because that's what I want to find. So 733 torr. My volume is the 0.651 liters. Moles is what I'm looking for. R is um, 62.4 liters torr. Moles Kelvin. And my temperature is 295 Kelvin. I'm going to go ahead and solve that for N. And when I do solve that, I get 0 0.0259 moles of O2. The question asks, what is the mass of the potassium chloride in the original sample? Now it's a stoichiometry problem. So 0 0.0259 moles of O2. I can go straight to my mole ratio because I'm already in moles. Moles of O2. Moles of KClO3. So I have 3 moles of O2 and 2 moles of KClO3. That came from this and this. Came from here and here. So we remember our stoichiometry. And then... We're going to put moles of KClO3 on the bottom, grams of KClO3 on top. It's one mole, and my formula weight is 122.6. And then I can go through and I can solve all of this, and I end up with 2.12 grams of KClO3. So the number of grams that I started with was 2.12. Um, we want to make sure this is this is a good, solid gas law problem, and this is this is where we're headed. So this might be something that you need to take notes on, and then watch the solving of it again.